Hello there, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to the LTG Collaborative interview series. Uh, today, I have with me a teacher from Michigan. Her name is Amy Peters, and we're going to hear about her. We're going to hear about her teaching journey, her interest in infusing giving in the classroom, and some transformational experiences uh, she's noticed that's, that's occurred in her students as a result of infusing service learning and philanthropy in the classroom. And then I'm also going to touch on our Teach One initiatives for the 2018-19 school year, uh, because those are our turnkey ready to use lessons and project ideas that you can infuse um, for three key initiatives that start right now back to school uh, around uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Day and then again for Earth Day. And so on, uh, without further ado, I'm going to introduce Miss Amy Peters. Uh, Amy's on the line. Can you introduce yourself, Amy? Hi. Hi, my name is Amy Peters. Um, I teach in Westland, Michigan, and this year I am an instructional coach, but um, this is my 18th year in education, and for the past 17 years, I've taught kindergarten or first grade. Excellent. Can you tell us a little bit more about just yourself, Amy, your teaching journey, hobbies, um, what brought you to teaching in the first place? Oh, that, that's actually funny. Um, my parents had a later in life in their marriage baby, and so... Um, I actually had a little, when I was in college, had a little brother in kindergarten at the time, and um, he was he was a real he was a real rascal, and um, he was always getting in trouble. And at that moment, I kind of really started thinking a lot about what what was working for him and what wasn't working for him, and that's kind of when I knew that that early childhood was where I wanted to be. Oh, um, I love that. Yeah, it, it was it was a funny way to get there, right? Um, I was pretty undecided for a bit, but once I, once I figured it out, I was pretty happy I was there. And I actually, I love, 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 love kindergarten. Um, first grade was really neat, too, because they're a little bit more independent, and you can have a slightly different conversation. But um, just what happens in a kindergarten room is such a hoot. Yeah, give some examples of that. You know, what are some things that really stick out in your mind over your teaching tenure that are those things that might inspire a, an up-and-coming kindergarten teacher to stick with it and, and be excited you know, about you know, it. I got to tell you, if you can, I know it's kind of, it can be kind of crazy in there, right? So you kind of have to get your mind in in their their space, you know. And if you can just ride it out and, and enjoy the humor and the beauty of every single day and of these moments and kind of capture their sense of humor, um, it really does. It really does. Uh, make it to be such a fun day when you're in kindergarten Aww. and first grade's cool too you know I don't I don't want to say it's not because in first grade you get to see them start to have opinions and start to blossom and they really start to care about one another in the class more so I felt like when I started to do our uh, when I did my um, first learning to give um, service project it was actually in first grade because I thought that they were a little bit more able to um, to understand the impact and and share in that experience mm-hmm Excellent. Um, when you're thinking about that kind of impact and experience, you know, what, what are some of the lessons and projects that you've done with those kiddos that, you know, you're most proud of, things that you've developed or created? Well, you know, always over the years um, at our school, we um, I've always been in, um, pretty focused on having everybody help make cards and things for veterans. Um, we have a senior center, senior center that's local that we've um, made seasonal decorations and brought over message and um, positive messages over to them. Um, our district's also pretty um, focused on having something called the Literacy Corps, and I've helped coordinate that at my school for the past few years, where it is senior citizens that come in and read with the kids one-on-one -on -one in the hall. Mm. And so as a teacher, I try to pick somebody that doesn't have that daily interaction with an adult or somebody that could just be, you know, need that little pick me up or boost. Um, so those are some of the things in the past. And actually last year, we decided to kind of get a, take it a little bit further. And we did a, um, we got a mini grant from Learning to Give and did a service project um, raking the, the leaves of the members of our community surrounding our school. We have a heavily wooded area around our school, so there is loads of leaves for mm. everybody. <laughs> yeah, and I have actually some of those pictures up on the screen right now that um, if anyone's watching, they can kind of take a look at those. How many students were involved in that project, Amy? Oh, you know, we did the whole first grade. I want to say there there was 90 maybe, 80 to 90 kids that, that we had out there. 
Um, we had four classes out there and four teachers and our district photographer and our principal was out there. And even some parents, when, when they saw us raking, got their rakes out of their garage and, and came out and joined us, which was really neat. Excellent. Yeah. Talk about a little bit of the, the feedback of those students. You know, what did they say? What did they think? Well, you know, actually, what, one of the things I didn't know was one of the houses uh, that we that we went to was one of the kids' grandparents, and so that child was able to say um, just how to, how touched that their grandpa was, and how how meaningful it was for him to uh, see all these kids um, who they, you know, in all honesty, they put up with the traffic of our school every day right in front of their house, mm -hmm. and how we were able to give back to them because they certainly do give up a lot to us. Um, a lot of patients, at least, to be living directly across from an elementary school. Um, I actually had another little guy that, that I really do think is important to talk about. Um, he is somebody who academically across the board struggled, you know, far below grade level. Um, his home life um, wasn't the best. By the end of the year, he was actually uh, living in a homeless center. Aww. And... Um, he was, he, he, could, he was really good at things outside. And so that was when we initially started thinking about the grant was, how can we capitalize on his, his strengths? Um, and so when we were doing this, he really stepped up and he would start to organize kids. He was able to see that, by the way, unless you tell first graders you've got to rake in one direction, they do not know that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so that's something I learned. Uh. Like he was able to see it from almost an adult viewpoint. Uh -huh. And he was like, hey, everybody, come rake this way. So stepped in and yeah. took a little bit of a leadership role. Yeah. yeah. And just to see him transform into this person that felt this value as in our group and in our class. And we always worked for that for him. Um, but this definitely gave him a chance to shine. So that is definitely something I have goosebumps even talking about it. Too. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's, I mean, that, that is something that stands to say that service learning is important because it gives those opportunities to students who might not feel that in the normal classroom setting. Absolutely. Our school is a Title I school. Um, I think we're 60-something percent Title I. And um, so sometimes some of these kids don't feel that they have something to give. But really and truly, everybody has something to give. There, there really is. I mean, he was able to give of his service, and, and that was profound that here he was able to give back to other people was, was, was exciting for him. And I think it gave him, you know, a place in our school and a place where he felt like he could give. Excellent. Excellent. Amy, talk a little bit about your new position and how you transitioned from the classroom into this newer kind of service learning support role. Well, this year, um, my district it has um, done a, a new program where they are putting instructional coaches in each of the buildings. And in, an instructional coach's focus is to help um, teachers, you know, what kind of a goal do you want to set? And then how can we work together to obtain your goals in the classroom? Um, I can help do some of the research. I can look through our data and say, this is what I'm coming up with when I look through your data, this is how we can um, help, I can help you get to your goals. Um, I'm also able to model some lessons and co-teach some lessons. So it's given me a little bit more of a flexibility to make an impact across the grades um, and across the whole school. Excellent, okay. And this is the first time that that's been implemented in your district, correct? It is, it is. And actually we're just learning as we go. You know, we started this program and and we're having professional development once a week. And so considering it's September, we're still really learning and crafting what that means at each school and what that means to each instructional coach and what that means to the district as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, so, so far, so good. I'm really enjoying it. I've, I've um, moved to a new building and I've been fortunate enough, um, fortunate enough to be with some seriously amazing teachers that um, some are newer and some, some are more established in teaching and really seeing the, the mix of the, and dynamics of this group of people is pretty, pretty, insight, pretty inspirational really. Um, even today I was in a classroom at the end of the day, somebody had to leave early because they had a hive outbreak and yeah. so I ran and it took the last 10 minutes of his class. And as he was leaving, the class was going around giving a compliment. And each person was given a chance to give a compliment to somebody else. And I thought, oh, man, maybe I want to teach fourth grade now because it was pretty cool. Did and you know if that's something that, that they implement every day, kind of at the end of the day to end the day? It is. 
That is it amazing. Is. Isn't it cool? Mm-hmm. And you know, another thing that I really appreciated um, that I've been kind of thinking about on my whole way home was he, you were also able to pass. And so that moment to, to, to not feel on the spot if that just wasn't you in that mm-hmm. moment, mm-hmm. that's okay too, you know? And sometimes it's okay to be the listener and, and take it all in and, and learning them maybe the next day. And you could even see a couple of kids pass. And it, at the very end of it, they raised their hand and they had rethought that. And I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. They just needed a little more time to think about it, decide what they wanted right. to say. Yeah. Yeah. And it was sweet to see what they were all thanking each other for. I mean, they, they were able to come up with really specific things like, thank you so much when we sit in the lunchroom every day and you sit and you're, you're my friend and you sit next to me. And every day in math, you're the one who always tries to um, help explain the problems to me. And I really appreciate it. There's a little guy in this fourth grade room that isn't even reading at a kindergarten level. I mean, he was able to read mom and dad and that was it when I um, did some testing with mm-hmm. him. And so I know across the board, some of these things that are a struggle for him, even f- picking his lunch choice was a struggle the first day of school. Um, so it's, it's cute to see this classroom, not even cute, but it's pretty amazing to see this classroom rally around him and, and give him that, that sense of community and support. Yep. Awesome. In your role, how do you help to infuse, um, you know, like this, the standards that, you know, this teachers have to incorporate in everything that they're doing, state standards, common core standards, those student needs, and then, you know, like administrative pressures and that sort of thing, while still infusing that giving service learning mindset. How do you help them? Or at this point, how do you envision yourself helping them incorporate it all? I can probably speak more to how it happened last year at this point. And really, it was more than I thought about this question, too, the student needs went down as more as they're more engaged. Mm. You know, the more and more that these, this little guy that, that I kept talking about that was living in a homeless shelter by the end, his behavior problems were less and less and less every time we were a part of this project. Mm. Um, and we did it a few different times. He, he um, was more engaged in, so he, he, I found myself not needing to support him as much. And I thought that was interesting and something kind of value, of value to point out about um, service learning. Um, in terms of the standards, you know, hindsight's always twenty twenty. Mm-hmm. So once we were done with the project, I was able to think of about 10 different ways that upon repeating the project, I was able to do it. Um, but initially, it was easy to pull out writing out of everything, um, you know, recalling information from experiences, to answer questions, writing personal narratives mm-hmm. um, are two parts of the student common core standards for first grade. Um, obviously, social studies was a huge piece of it, um, members of the community and neighborhood. Um, but, but later, I was able to think of a lot more ways to incorporate science and math into it, too. And in terms of administrative goals, um, I'm pretty lucky. You know, our district is really supportive of service learning and project-based learning. Um, so I, I felt like we were giving a little, given a little bit of um, freedom to still work within the, the standards that we needed to cover, but, but also try out some new things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's great. Um, in terms of your teaching practice, we often hear, you know, teachers sometimes feel like they work in isolation or they, you know, they're in their own classroom. They do that. They leave for the day. Like what um, kind of community building are you doing with your colleagues at your in your district? Um, but then also what teaching associations and, and programs are you a part of outside of your district? And how do those help you, um, one, in your teaching practice in years prior? And how do you think they'll help you in your new role? Um, wow, that's like a 10-part question. I know. <laughs> I'm good at um, those. <laughs> you know, in terms of um, doing our service learning project together and doing philanthropy education together, there were four of us that taught first grade together last year, and we were able to see different strengths in one another. And um, one of us did a better job at, you know, connecting lessons to Common Core standards and sharing that out. One of us was better at the logistics of coming up, how to move 100 children, 80, 90 children across the street and do that safely. Mm-hmm. Um, we were also connected with our administrative um, roles. Um, the principal was out there with us and the technology department. So there were several parts of our district that were all working together. Um, my goal as I move forward is to continue that in my new school. Um, 
already at our last staff meeting, I pulled up the Learning to Give website and showed people how to log in and showed them where it was to apply for a mini grant and showed them how to, you know, sort your lessons by, by grade level, by standard, um, by topic area. So I'm really excited. I sent out the email and everything to everybody with the link to it, and I've gotten a few uh, replies, and I'm just waiting for that initial September shock that everybody's in mm-hmm. to die down, and then we can kind of take a, take a stronger look at that. Yeah. And, and I think there's more to your question, but I don't know if I'm No, I think you actually hit all 10 points, I would say, in that 10 part Woo-hoo, question. Winning. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, kind of related to, you know, um, self, uh, not self help, I guess, but building your own professional identity, that sort of thing. You know, are there any. I think I'm still coming a long way in my professional identity. I mean, 18 years in, I didn't see myself as an instructional coach. 10 years ago. So I think it continues to grow and shift um, as I've grown and shifted, you know. Um, so this year I'm excited to to, to delve more in. I, I'm learning a lot more about instructional coaching and some authors that are um, that have studied it for a while and, and can, can give me some pointers and some guidance as to best practice in mm-hmm. that. Um, as a reading teacher, there were people that I loved too. And as a philanthropy teacher, which is still ra- rather rather new to me, um, I, I really still do go to your website a lot, actually. Excellent. What other kind of books and resources, you know, like what are you reading right now? Um, well, actually, I, what I just ordered um, this morning um, was by Jim Knight, and he um, writes some books for instructional coaches, and it's called High Impact, in, in, High Impact Instruction, and it's about um, – strategies that give you the best bang for your buck Mm -hmm. so it's kind of like the the instructional coaches tool book Um, but last year in the past I would say 10 years I really focused on um, Jan Richardson and the next step to guided reading and then she has a couple that follow after that um, and trying to use her model in in my reading groups to to really get better at um, Jan Richardson's model of guided reading I also ended up um, writing a grant a few years ago um, from Dollar General, mm-hmm. and I, I, it was like four thousand dollars. It was pretty impressive. Mm-hmm. But I got um, it's called Footprints Literacy Footprints, and um, it was a guided reading series that Jan Richardson wrote with um, with a uh, um, publishing company. Okay. So it, it, I I really saw a lot of gains with my students, and through that I was able to pilot it in my school and in my district. And I was just found out today that across our district. Um, we have purchased it for every grade level, um, K3. Amy, that's amazing. I know. Isn't that exciting? That is and very I mean, cool. I mean, if anybody's looking for something, you know, to really enhance their guided reading, I, I don't have enough good things to say about it. I had to work really hard at the timing of it because it's a fast-paced program, but once you kind of get that down, you, you really see your kids grow so much. And that makes it worth it. So, it really does, right? Excellent. It does. Excellent. Do you have um, any other thoughts that you would want to leave this audience with when it comes to infusing philanthropy and service learning in the everyday? I do. You know, I I really did think a lot about um, that question. And the one thing that I want to say to to some of the teachers who are starting out and that it's new to them, it, it can look a little intimidating, I think. And sometimes, you know, when you pull up a lesson online or you know, you have an idea in your head, it, it can seem like it's bigger than it is, but it really is doable. If, if you break it down, it's more doable than you think. And because the kids get on board so much um, that it makes every step so much easier than you think, if that makes sense, what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. No, I think so, um, for sure. Yeah, I just I just want them to, to not be overwhelmed with it. You know, if anybody had any questions for me about how to get it started or you know, little tips that we learned along the way from our group of people last year. I'm definitely happy to share that. But but I, what I'm trying to even share at my new school is just try something out. It doesn't, you know, you can do it on a small scale and then the next year learn and grow from it. Mm-hmm. And you don't have to start out with this most epic project, but just even as simple as, you know, having that um, box of cards in your classroom that say good deeds that you could do for each other and pull yeah. one out a day. And go around and say, you know, who, who thinks they can do this? And come up with, have the kids come up with ideas. Mm-hmm. Amy, thank you so much for your time oh, and your support and your um, 
you know, Thank your engagement you guys with learning to give and, and helping your students understand that they can make a difference uh, and that we all, you said this before, we all have something to give. Every single person can give something. Uh, we really do, right? And uh, thank you so much. We appreciate you and, and thank you for joining us today. Sounds good. Thanks, Katie. Mm -hmm. uh, bye bye. Bye bye. Oh. And thank you um, again, everybody. That was Amy Peters, a, a Michigan a Michigan teacher. Uh, and to close out this conversation, I just wanted to remind you that we have all of our Teach One initiatives up and live on the website at learningtogive.org slash teach one. You have Teach One for Back to School, which we've done in partnership with the organization Crayon Collection. We also have Teach One for Martin Luther King Jr. Day and Teach One for Earth Day. All of these lessons are written by teachers like you, uh, and the lessons are separated out into K through 5, 6 through 8, and 9 through 12. Uh, you can do them in one classroom or in a whole school. You can do them through a group of first grade classrooms. You can try to connect a, an 11th grade classroom to a 6th grade classroom to complete the service aspect of the project. Um, the opportunities are endless, and all of these lessons are Common Core and State Standard aligned as well. So not only will you infuse philanthropy and service learning, um, but you'll be able to do so by also meeting the standards um, that are required of you and your students. So again, thank you so much for tuning in. We appreciate you. Uh, check back in for another teacher feature interview coming soon.